A specific type of chemical reaction that occurs is called a dissociation reaction. The dissociation reaction shows how particular ionic compounds break apart into their ions when they're dissolved into water. Now water needs to be present for this chemical reaction, but it is not written in the chemical formula. An important note is that this only happens with ionic compounds that are soluble in water. If the compound is insoluble, this there will be no dissociation reaction that occurs. We've also added some new symbols to our balanced or to our chemical reaction. We have added a solid and the, the S in parentheses stands for solid. We've added AQ, and the AQ stands for aqueous. So aqueous means that it is dissolved into water. Please note that when we're writing dissociation reactions, the elements need to be balanced on either side of the chemical reaction as well as the charges. So on the reactant side of the chemical reaction, you'll notice that there is no charge written, which means that when our ions form, the positive charges and the negative charges need to be equal to each other. So the steps for writing a dissociation reaction, first we need to figure out if our ionic compound is soluble in water. We're going to look at our solubility rules in order to determine if it is soluble or insoluble. Once we know that it is soluble, we determine what ions it breaks into, including their proper charge. And please remember that our polyatomic ions will stay together as a unit. The polyatomic ions do not break apart further. They stay together. Then we balance the reaction to make sure that the elements are balanced as well as the overall charge in the chemical reaction. Let's look at some examples. Our first example is calcium chloride. If we look at our solubility rules, we see that chlorides are usually soluble. If we look at the exception part of the table, calcium is not an exception, so this will be a soluble compound. For writing our dissociation reaction, we want to include the phases. So our calcium chloride is going to start out as a solid. And the ions that it breaks apart into, calcium is our cation. If we look at its position on the periodic table, it is a plus two charge. Our anion, and we need to include the phase of aqueous, our anion is going to be Cl minus. It again is going to be aqueous. And now we want to balance our elements. So we have one calcium on the left hand side of our arrow, one on the right. We're good there. Chloride, there's two on the left hand side. So we need to put a two in front of our chloride on the right hand side. Now to double check our charges, on the left hand side there is no charge written, so that means that it is neutral or has zero charge. On the right hand side our calcium gives us a plus two charge. Our chloride gives, we have two of them and each one's a negative one, which gives us a minus two. So overall on the right hand side of the chemical reaction, we have zero charge. If we look at our next example, we have potassium oxide. So potassium 
no matter what it's attached to, is always soluble. So this will have a dissociation reaction. It's going to be a solid when we add it. And we want to write our ions. So potassium, based on its position on the periodic table, is a plus one charge. We need to include our phases of aqueous. Oxi oxide or oxygen is a negative two charge. It'll also be aqueous. Now we want to balance our elements. So we have one oxide. So that's good. We have two potassium. So that becomes our coefficient of two in front. So that subscript becomes our coefficient. Now we can double check our charges. So again, um, solid ionic compounds should always be zero. We want to double check the charges of our ions. So we have two times a plus one, and we have a negative two. So two times plus one is a plus two, minus two. Overall, our charge is zero. Now when it comes to polyatomic ion containing compounds, the polyatomic ion stays as one entire unit. It does not get broken down into individual elements. So let's check our solubility for sodium sulfate. So sodium, no matter what it is attached to, is always soluble. So this will have a dissociation reaction. Our cation, is going to be sodium. Our anion is going to be our sulfate. With a negative two charge. So sulfates are always negative two. So the SO4, SO4 is on both sides of the reaction. So that is balanced. We've got two sodium. We have two sodium, I have to add the coefficient of two on the right hand side of our chemical reaction. So if we check our charges, two times plus one, plus a negative two. So overall we have zero charge and our reaction is balanced. Please pause the video and see if you can complete the last two dissociation reactions. All right, so calcium nitrate. If we look at our solubility rules, nitrates, no matter what they are attached to, are always soluble. So we will have a dissociation reaction. Our cation, it's going to be calcium. It's a plus two based on the fact that it's in the second row on the periodic table. Our nitrates is NO3 minus. And now we're going to balance our chemical reaction. So one calcium on each side. We're good there. We do have two nitrates so that two becomes the coefficient in front of nitrate two no3 minus if we double check our charges we've got plus two charge from our calcium plus two times minus one for our nitrate so overall we have two nitrates with a negative one charge Overall, we have a charge of zero. Number five, so magnesium, we do not find that anywhere up in our soluble compounds. So now we have to look at our insoluble. So carbonates are usually insoluble. Magnesium is not in group 1A. So this would be insoluble, which means there is no reaction. 
So this one will not have a dissociation reaction. If you add it to water, it's just going to fall to the bottom of the container as a solid and not dissolve.